Hi and welcome again to Thoughts My Car, my name's Carl, welcome back, I'll be your host for the duration of the video. Today I want to talk a little bit about my school days. The reason for that is that online recently I came across some old uh, music that I haven't heard in a long time. Uh, the Great Rock and Roll Swindle by the Sex Pistols. Uh, good or bad, they were there. That's about all you need to say about them. Um, it's interesting. This was an album that I uh, used to listen to in the shed, uh, the rear of my friend's house, Alan, Alan Scott. Hi, Alan. Uh, we would go there and... Um, turn this thing into a pogo pit, he, I, and Steve Spate, my other buddy from school. And this is a great rock and roll swindle. An interesting album, kind of like what they used to call a curate's egg, which is, uh, some of it's uh, fantastic, some of it's awful. All of it's very exciting. I had a really weird time because I personally um, was a rocker. I grew up with status quo, thanks to my brother Andy. And uh, my older brother Viv was a Rolling Stones fan. I kind of favoured some of the newer upcoming bands. I was a big Bowie fan and I was a big uh, Queen fan. <laughs> a band that my brother Andy said would never get anywhere because they were rubbish. Ha <laughs> uh, so I used to hang out with mods and rockers and punks and I had the long greasy hair and the blue jeans and um, it's a really interesting mix of people because I'd get into fights just by being in the wrong place in the wrong clothes. Um, I used to manage to get out of them without so much as a scratch because I'm a pretty good talker. And if all else fails, I could run. But uh, it doesn't make me a coward. It makes me a sensible person. They tended to be multiples, like five or ten of them. So I could go down in glory and be talked about forever. Or I could live. Anyway, that isn't why I'm calling. I'm calling. Calling? This one isn't why I'm recording. Talking about the rock and roll swindle, great rock and roll swindle, uh, reminded me of some of the things that I'd forgotten for many years. Uh, around about the time we were listening to this particular album and a bunch of others in Alan's backyard, um, on a little plug in portable turntable, record player as we call them. Uh, we were doing the usual high school stuff. We, um, nothing like that. We had uh, all kinds of interesting things going on, like um, it was a two mile trip to school. Well, two miles from me, Alan was closer to the school. Um, and we didn't have school buses, so you made your own fun there and back. I was usually late, so I ran it. Two miles there, two miles back. What we would do. Uh, all the houses in England, for my Canadian friends that don't know this, tend to be uh, the yards adjacent to each other and they all uh, are separated by fences or hedges of approximately three feet in height. Now what this makes for is a fantastic steeplechase for high school kids. Uh, so what you would do is you'd start at one end of the street and you would run through every single yard, front yard, and you would jump the fences and jump the hedges and race each other to the end. And this was interesting, particularly after a while when the, um, <laughs> the people that owned the houses realized that we'd been doing this and we were going through their rose bushes and going through their flower beds and not intentionally, but it was happening. We were damaging their yards, so they were not happy about this. So then it became a point of honor. Uh, what we would do, 
there used to be a game in, called British Bulldog that you would play in the street where one person was it and the others had to get from one side of the street to the other without being tagged uh, and this was kind of like a version of that but on such a different level because you'd have the three of us racing and you could see ten yards ahead there was a guy standing there waiting for you and sometimes he was armed with gardening implements of varying sizes, shapes and sharpness. So it was really interesting because three of you would leap the fence pretty much at the same time and you'd hit the ground running and you'd try and dodge the garden owner and you had to get round him and you had to get over the next fence and keep going and keep going. It's a really interesting game to play. Uh, especially if you were the two that didn't get caught me, Steve and Alan it was fun it was a lot of fun actually, I missed that uh, so you'd end up, you'd be running the gauntlet of three or four, of sometimes more uh, property owners that just didn't want you doing this it got to the stage where it was pretty much unfeasible to do that I couldn't do it anymore, so what we did then we moved on to something else. Uh, there was something called Starsky hopping, which if you know what I'm talking about, you're already going, oh yeah! If you don't, there was way back when a TV show called Starsky and Hutch. I made a film about it recently, a remake. And the guys there, what they had a habit of doing was they'd find a perfectly, perfectly good part vehicle and they'd run up the hood or bonnet, cross the roof, and off the back. It was the shortest way to the bad guy, and it looked great on camera, right? So, uh, yeah, for a while, that became a trend. Something we were all doing. So instead of running through the gardens, dodging angry and irate house and property owners, we were starting to carry weapons. <laughs> we started Starsky hopping instead. So instead of going into the yard and running over 20 different fences, we'd stay in the street and run over 20 different cars. Which pissed the garden owners off just as much because they looked across to the front street and it was their car we were running across. So. It was amusing that we missed them because they're in the garden and they're waiting for us and they're looking and they don't see us because we're actually on the street. Leaving footprints on their hood and in some cases dents and scratches. So it's a very bad thing to do. Children, don't ever do this. Don't ever, ever do this because that's undoubtedly illegal and you would probably get arrested and you would probably get some nasty thing as a penalty for doing it. Uh, we would have been about 14, 15 when we were doing this. Didn't give a shit. Uh, we were not trouble causers, ever, any of us. Uh, wouldn't hurt a fly. Except for Steve Spate, who once swallowed a goldfish, for which I never forgave him. Just so you know, Steve. Um, we never caused trouble, we never got into a fight, we didn't bully anybody. In fact, we would pick fights with the bullies just to stop them picking on other people well at least I did anyway um, because I was bullied a lot as well as a kid so let me tell you anybody that's going through that now or sometime in the future bullying is going to follow you through life I remember thinking that Oh, I'm soon been leaving school, it'll all be over, and then I can get some get on with the rest of my life. Well, no. If you're the kind of person that is susceptible to bullying, bullies don't change when they leave school. Bullies get jobs. Bullies get into positions of power because they put themselves forward. They're assertive. They demonstrate management capability. So guess what? The guy that hires you is probably the bully. Might not be. But it's a pretty good chance. And the thing is, this is going to follow you after you leave school. So, 
there's no easy answer to this. The only thing I can say is if you're being bullied, turn around, take a kick in, give it back. You fight back, you can give the guy a bloody nose or a black eye, even if he breaks his knuckles on your face. He's not going to do it forever, he's going to stop. He might not respect you, he might never like you, you don't care. You just want him to stop. When he stops picking on you, he'll start picking on somebody else. Bullies always go for the easy target. Remember that. Don't be an easy target. Anyway. See, that's another school memory. I remember being bundled into the school soccer nets by uh, three or four people. Um, he thought it would be fun to just give somebody a kicking on their way home from school. And that had happened a few times. I got a lot of that because, well, I just did. Uh, it won't stop unless you make it stop. This isn't a lecture, just my life experience for what it's worth. One of my life experiences includes the uh, jumping over fences thing. I also remember a party. Uh, <laughs> music. Um, I remember another buddy of mine, Andy Murray. His parents went away for the weekend and rather foolishly left the house unattended. Well, in his care. So they had a big party. He was a uh, punk rock guy. Piercings, Mohawk, the works. And we had a massive party. I remember having two bottles of his father's home-brewed marrow rum. And um, three in the morning, <laughs> while all the uh, punks were jumping up and down and mosh-pitting and pogoing away to... Here's the undertones. And that was stiff little fingers. can't remember exactly which track. But um, while they were doing that, I'm weaving my way in between them with a vacuum cleaner cleaning up the peanut shells. Surreal. Which is good because uh, his parents came home unexpectedly and found the place nice and tidy, although it was full of drunk kids. So, being the good, well balanced, middle class parents that they were. They cracked open, cracked open some more marrow rum and fired with us. No harm was done. What they're going to do? Send him to his room? Uh, I remember waking up at something like seven in the morning with my head on Andy's mother's lap on the couch. I don't think anything happened. But I did spend some time playing with that idea. Anyway, uh, interesting times in school. Some people say it's the best times of your life, some people say it's the worst. What it is for sure, it's a microcosm of your real life and as it's going to be. Uh, if you're going to get bullied at school, you'll get bullied in the real world. If you're going to be good looking and popular at school you're going to be good looking and popular in the real world it really does form who you're going to be not to say you can't change it when you leave because I certainly did that but um, it's an opportunity to be who you want to be you're away from home you choose your friends you choose your enemies you choose who you are and who you want to grow into. Really good thing. I'm getting all philosophical. That was never the intention. I wanted to talk about pogoing. Um, which is a dance invented by somebody in a room full of drawing pins. Barefoot. Weird things going on with the road. Please excuse my distraction there for a second. There we go. Thank you. So, Interesting thing, I had, I think I got seven O levels, and somewhere I still got the original paperwork, can't find it, 
Interesting thing is that if you apply for a job in Canada, there's a form you have to fill in and there's a check box you have to check the box it says, did you graduate high school? If you didn't, you might as well tear it up and throw it away because if you don't graduate high school, you're thick, they won't hire you. It's a basic minimum level entry requirement. Problem for me and everybody else that comes from England is that we don't do high school graduation. You don't get a diploma that says, I graduated, so you can't check the box. You can cram as much text into that little explanation or the root box as you want, but if you don't check that box, you don't get the job, and if you don't get the job, well, all kinds of other bad things happen. But, um, what I did get, as I say, seven all levels, which is better than most, um, not as good as many, but more than acceptable. I also went on to do some university, I've done college. Uh, but without a high school graduation diploma, there you go, without a high school graduation diploma, you get nowhere here, which sucks. I sent back to England for my student's transcript. Um, and they got me mixed up with some other Carl Green because there were three in my year at school well give or take a year either way but um, they sent me back paperwork saying I'd only got two and that's wrong and I called them on it it cost me $90 to do this and um, they said well this is what we have on file deal with it but your records are wrong. Mm. Anyway, academic because I'm now a college student and once a uh, at Niagara College. I'm in a two year apprenticeship course and once you get to the end of that you get a nice college diploma and a college diploma trumps a high school graduation. So if you've got secondary education at your college diploma, you can skip the box, it says high school graduation, so coaching, good stuff, plus it's a government sponsored thing. Anyway, I'm back in school, kind of weird, but there you go. All this from the great rock and roll swindle, which I was listening to last night, along with Ian Dury and uh, New Boots and Panties, really undervalued um, performer, sadly no longer with us. Mm. Ties back into bullying, interestingly enough. Ian Jury was a uh, headline act. He was number one act for many records. He did all kinds of songs. Probably most famous for Hit Me With Your Rhythm Stick and Reasons To Be Cheerful Part 3. He did all kinds of other songs as well, and um, the interesting thing is, as a child, he had polio, a rare disease now, thank the Lord, or whoever you choose to thank, um, a debilitating disease which affects your growth. He had a withered arm and a uh, club foot. He would take the stage using a cane for actual physical support. The stage got rushed once by the audience in the middle of a frenzy because this is punk rock and you kind of go for it. And they, they stole his cane because they thought it was part of the um, part of the act. It wasn't, it fell over. Yeah, a withered shortened arm and a club foot. And he probably had an extreme, because you have this from birth, right? Well, he had an extremely difficult childhood. Didn't put up with the shit that a lot of people do. He fought. And he made it to number one, not once, but many times. He had a successful music career. Perfect example. He wasn't young, good-looking. He wasn't handsome. He wasn't one of the beautiful people in high school. It was the runt of the litter. And look what he did with his life. 
don't take any crap off anybody because they're not better than you just because they've got more money or because they don't have a mole. You know, they don't have to have nice teeth or even a good haircut. Just You need to just know what you want and go for it and not put up with any crap from anybody. Anyway, enough of this. This has been far too long already. I'm going to say... Uh, Thanks for letting me ramble. This has been genuine thoughts from a car. I didn't plan this. I just started talking. And I hope that I've managed to share something of interest. And if I have, that's excellent. We'll see you on the next video. If I haven't... Oh, dear. Sorry. I'll make my life more interesting. But there are some things I cannot share on thoughts from a car. Gotta protect the innocent. Uh, we'll come back next time. We'll talk some more about. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, why not? Let's talk about um, me and Steve and Alan. Not the juicy stuff. Just the um, what happened after school. Something to look forward to on the next episode of Thoughts from the Car. In the meantime, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for watching. My name, as always, is Carl, and yours is whatever your name is that you already know that. Thanks. Goodbye for now.